Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series. As always, you can see our work from the previous episode, which was typecasting and primitive data object containers. Now let's just start up a new Java project, and this episode we will be focusing on basic threading, which um, of course we'll get into all about what it is and how you do it and such. Let me just set up the standard package and stuff. Oh crap, I hate when it does that. Um, but yes, uh, this episode will be basic threading. The next episode will be um, more advanced threading. I mean, it won't be really advanced per se, but it will be more advanced than basic, as you could probably obviously tell. Now, let's go over what is a thread. What a thread is um, something that Java uses to um, execute commands. There's one main thread that it runs. So whenever you run this program, the Java Virtual Machine creates a thread to run your program. And whenever all the threads are stopped running, whenever all the threads have stopped running, then the program exits. So if we just tell this to do system.out.println hero um, word, word, but yeah, if we just print out hello, hero world, we'll just do that for now, it'll be like, hey, we're starting a thread that has main, so we'll start with main, we'll execute everything in main, oh, nothing else, thread is done executing, so we can shut down the program, and it, and there, and it shuts down, so everything in here is a thread itself, which is the main thread, so what we can start doing is that, say we wanted to do system dot out dot print line goodbye world and let's say we don't want it to um we don't want it to instantaneously say hello and then goodbye let's say we want to stay a while so we'll do this is a static method in thread and we'll do thread dot sleep and it goes in milliseconds so if we wanted to sleep one second that'd be a thousand milliseconds Let's see. Oh, and um, thread dot sleep and some other thread methods throws um, declares that it throws an an exception. So we had to throw it in a try, which of course we went over tries when we when we went over errors and exceptions and runtimes exceptions. And the only exception that tr that sleep and the other thread methods would should throw would be an interrupted exception, which means someone interrupted it. And we're just going to do nothing because. Um, probably nothing's going to interrupt it. Uh, which problem over here? Oh, nothing. Okay. So now if we run, it'll wait one second and then say goodbye. If we want it to make it more noticeable, we'll just change that to two seconds. I'll say it hello. It'll wait two seconds. Goodbye. So it goes here. Go say, well, the system would be like, okay, let's go to main. Let's print out hello world. And then we're going to try to do this thread.sleep and continually while it's waiting those 2,000 milliseconds. It keeps it all. The system just sleeps. If it does happen to catch an interrupted exception, of course it it um quit um stops this command and goes directly into these brackets. But we'll get over interruption um soon. And then after that 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds, it goes here, prints it, and say, "Hey, we have nothing else to do. Let's just um stop the thread and um terminate the program." This error right here is just some uh, bug. Right, by the way, it's not really an error at the end of those parentheses. So that's how we have one thread. But let's say we want more than one thread. Like this thread can only execute one command at a time in sequential motion, in um, in a sequential list of how you write the code and what you do. But let's say we want two things running at the same time, which of course, if you're developing a game or uh, certain types of application, you definitely want to do um, different things at different times. So there are three main ways that you can create a new thread. So what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna, tr um, uh, excuse me. So we're going to create a new class, and I'm going to do thread implement. And we'll just leave that there, because I actually wanted to start with thread extend. The first thing, and most basic thing you want to do, which is not many people do this, because you do extends thread, which of course is a thread. And um, the only thing we really need in here that we need to override from thread is the public void run. 
That's all we need to do. And you know, see this overrides from thread. So what we can do right here is say um, exactly what we did before. And we'll just cut it out and paste it in here. So that's all it really does. So now if we say public static thread extend um, t extend equals new <laughs> thread extend. We should have no problem with that. And all we have to do is t extend dot start. Start it and whenever you call a thread start method it just automatically goes to their run method. So if you do it, it should be in the console, it should be the exact same thing as before. So it does hello world, waits two seconds, says a goodbye. Now not only this starts the thread, like what you would normally do, what would normally happen if you called a method, it would run through the method and then it would return back to here. So if we had like um, a public void initialization here, it would run through everything in initialate initialization in it and then come back to the main method. But with start, what start does, it starts the thread that's all it does. Then it just keeps going somewhere. And then it keeps going on. So if we did um, thread dot sleep, and this is just on the main thread, not the thread extend that we created, we'll do 500 milliseconds, which is only half a second. And I forgot to put it in a try again. Actually, we'll just do throws interrupted exception, just because I don't want to feel like making the catch loop. So now main can throw this and we're not handling it the virtual machine will handle it by terminating our program but we probably won't get it either way dot out dot print line so what happens when it creates a thread it doesn't like run through what the thread wants to do the thread does what it wants it goes completely off on a tangent and it does whatever it wants and the main thread keeps going so we'll say just poking my head in here and we should get hello world just poking my head in here and then that so it can keep running you know in um, different sequential motion than you want so the next thing you want if you don't want to thread extend if you don't want to extend thread say you want to extend something else but still be able to have a thread well you can implement as many as many interfaces you want so we can do implements runnable which is an interface which provides the public void run method again so what we have to do we'll just put exactly the same thing in here because we're not trying to be original we're trying to be productive so we just put that in there and how we, we would start this is do public static thread i threat um, t implement equals new thread new thread implement oh there's supposed to be a space there so it's perf so basically as the constructor you put in the runnable thing which is just a class that implements a runnable is what you do so now if we wanted to go here we can do t we can change this to t implement dot start and since it's a thread and it'll just run it, it'll do the hello world and our main thread will do this and then our implementing thread will do that. Now the last way, the last most common way, this way isn't exactly as common as the rest, but it's still a, it's a nice way. If you're just doing very small things in a thread, like just quickly open up a little thread to, I don't know, poke its head in, which is actually I think what we're going to do. We're going to do new thread we're going to do new thread brackets dot start now this is what we call an anonymous inner class which is of course a type of nested class and basically you declare a new variable it could really be anything you it's basically you're put you're making a new object of anything and but you're um, overriding yeah, you're just overriding a method in the class or adding a method and you know it doesn't need a name because you're only using it once for this one thing so basically what we're gonna do is public avoid run inside this our own thread object which is anonymous which means it doesn't have a name so we'll just put what we normally put in there 
which is of course this. Actually, we don't want that. We're just going to do the system dot out dot print line. What's up, Doc? And we'll just I don't know. We'll just uh, wait. We'll just do thread dot slip thread dot sleep seven hundred and fifty million. Well, we should probably put this in. Um, here in this run method. Oh, what do you want this time? We well, yeah, it's the interrupted exception. New thread. Maybe it throws interrupted exception. Can I put it there? Can't I don't think I can. Okay, we'll just do a try and catch. That uh, was easy. There now, if we do it, it'll start. It'll start one thread after the other, and it'll be like, "Hello world, what's up, doc?" And then goodbye world. Just a weird sequential motion. So basically, right now we have three threads running at once. So basically, what happens is the main thread it searches for main, so it starts this thread. So that's thread started, go off into a tangent, which whatever it does. So now we have two threads running, then it goes here. It creates a thread and then it runs that thread. So now we have three threads running. It reaches the end and says, hey, we have nothing to do. So the main thread terminates and we have two threads running. Our anonymous thread and our implement thread. And the anonymous thread will end first. It'll be, you know, let's wait a bit. Print this out. Hey, we have nothing else to do. So this thread stops. So we have one thread left running. And that'll be the implement thread and stuff. So we um, maximum we get is three threads running. And they can all do different things at once. Now, um, now we're going to work on the interrupted exception. So let's say we're going to wait a couple. We're going to wait a couple seconds, and then we're going to be really mean, okay? We're going to do t implement dot interrupt because we're we're that rude. We're going to interrupt them, and just so we can actually uh, get something, we're going to remove this throws exception. And inside, so that should work. So this thread implement it runs. It's, so we're gonna do system dot out dot print line, and actually we should do this in error. It's rude to interrupt. So now if we run this, what's gonna happen? It starts a thread. That thread does what it wants, which happens to be printing something and then sleeping and then. If it doesn't get interrupted, it'll print something again. But then, right after that, like a very fraction of a nanosecond, I don't know how fast your processor is, but about that soon after, it starts another thread, and this thread, it just sleeps for a little bit, and then tries to interrupt the other thread. Oh, it says it's rude to interrupt. Hmm. Don't know why it uh, actually said that. Let's see... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it caught it. I mean, this, it caught it. And then, uh, it caught it and went on to the next thing instead of terminating. And it only printed the error after the goodbye world because it, th it just, um, printed that out. Even though it caught it before it printed it out, threads work, it just printed this out. And then um, it then went to its errors. So that's how it works. So if we like made this sleep one millisecond, then this will go real quick. <laughs> and we can also make it sleep a long time. But if we happen to make it sleep 2,001 seconds, which is just after it should print Goodbye World anyway, we shouldn't get an error message because this thread has long been extinct. Well, one millisecond. It's been it's shut down. That thread doesn't exist anymore. Well, that the thread isn't hasn't been alive for that long it's still an object and we can like start it again but that thread hasn't been alive for one millisecond so this tries to interrupt a thread that you can't interrupt because it's not it's not alive you getting you getting with it another thing we can do is the join method 
what's your problem? Oh yeah, An another unhandle exception because join is um sort of like sort of like um sleep. But we'll get into that soon. Same exact possible exception. We'll just do nothing again. Which problem this time? Oh, stupid me. Square brackets. I hate them! So what happens is that um, this thread is going to wait for a completion of another. So basically this thread is going to wait until that until this thread is done. So basically we can do it, then we can do another... We'll just do... Um, we don't even need to sleep here, really. So basically this is going to activate, it's going to wait till the other thread is done, and then we're just going to sleep for say... Let me actually set this up. Thread dot sleep for I don't know one second, and then you're going to uh, print something out. We're gonna print. Done. Simple enough. So basically, it's gonna wait for this thread to finish, and then it's gonna wait a second. It's gonna sleep a second, then it's gonna print that out. So we should wait. Hello world. Goodbye world, then a second later, we'll get done. So basically, join means well, you call the method you're waiting on. So as soon as this thread is done, what it's uh, metaphorically going to do is join this thread. Which, you know, thread, that does, it doesn't really make, it basically um, means you're waiting for the other thread. It doesn't really join them. It just allows you to metaphorically view it better. But, um, yeah. So you, it joins them. So, so basically, <laughs> yeah. So join is just um, is just a euphemism, basically. So you're gonna wait for that. Um, you're gonna wait for this. This thread is going to wait for this thread to finish, and then they're going to metaphorically join together, and this thread is going to keep going on its journey. You can also specify a the um, a series for it to um, a time for it to wait. So basically, it's gonna wait a second, and if it doesn't and if it doesn't um, end up, um, the other thread doesn't end. Uh, timeout is zero means to wait forever. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to wait that long. So if we wait like 2,001 seconds, it'll obviously work fine. It'll get that then it'll run and then it'll do that but if we wait a certain length that it isn't done then it's gonna print done it's gonna be like hey now we're gonna wait for this to end and if it doesn't end within one millisecond then we're just gonna not worry about it screw that thread if it's not gonna join us then we're against it not really but it's gonna so it's gonna if it doesn't uh, so it's gonna wait that long and if it doesn't happen if the, the other thread doesn't execute, it's just going to continue instead of continuously waiting. So it's going to continue and print done. So it printed done almost exactly 1,001 milliseconds after it printed Hello World. Almost. There's probably a few nanosecond differences, but hey, we as humans can't perceive nanoseconds. So that's fine with me. So that has been the basics of threading. And I will see you next time when we go into uh, more um, advanced concepts of threading. So, good night and good luck.